Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City has launched its national search for a developer with the creativity and financing to reimagine the Kemper Arena site. The RFP, or Request for a Proposal, is open nationwide to developers interested in investing in Kansas City's West Bottoms neighborhood. Uh, currently, it's vacant uh, almost every night and every day, except for a few events that, that are held there. And it's such an important historic building in the West Bottoms that if we can find a, a reuse for it that would bring folks back to the West Bottoms, it would be a win for the city. Oh, I think we're wide open as to possible suggestions uh, that make sense for both the developer and the city. I know a lot of us would like to see a youth component. A lot of us would like to see some sort of a daily draw where, where people would be coming down the West Bottoms, not once a weekend, but, but uh, five, six days of the week. Developers have until August 21st to submit proposals. A site inspection for Kemper Arena will be held on June 17th. Kansas City's summer curfew starts Friday, May 22nd and runs through September 27th. In the city's five entertainment districts, like the Plaza and Westport, minors must be with a parent after 9 p.m. Citywide, the curfew is 10 p.m. for minors 15 and younger and 11 p.m. for those aged 16 and 17. For more information about the curfew, visit our website at kcmo.gov and search curfew. Who doesn't love a garage sale? The Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department is sponsoring a garage sale with proceeds benefiting the City of Kansas City Charity Campaign. It takes place Saturday, June 13th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Neighborhood Preservation Parking Lot at 4900 Swope Parkway. You can come to sell or shop. The entire parking lot will be full of garage sale spaces. You can reserve your space for a $25 donation. The last day to reserve a space is Thursday, May 21st. Rent the space and then you can keep the profits from whatever you sell. For more information or to register, email lynda.johnson at kcmo.org or just call 816-513-6594. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Deb Ridgway, Bicycle Pedestrian Coordinator for the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Today, we are out on Ward Parkway for the city's first ever open streets festival called Cycle in the City. From 2 to 5 on Ward Parkway, you can come out and bike, walk, roll, run, jog. We've got activities for everybody age 8 to 80. There's food and beverage and just, it's an amazingly beautiful day and uh, we're very excited to be out here on this beautiful parkway and enjoying uh, the wonderful neighborhood. There are many impressive tricks one can do with a Chinese yo-yo, and I can tell from your reaction that this is not one of them. <laughs> Around the leg! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's my dad. Not a joke. Around both! <laughs> 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 Around both!
around and then through. Oh, now he's good, huh? Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Activities for people 8 to 80. We've got bungee pods, rock climbing walls, a BMX bike demo. We've got food and beverages. We've got, gosh, I can't even think of it all. Lawn games, badminton, um, yoga. There's uh, the Kansas City Ballet is doing dance lessons. We've got uh, roller derby uh, folks out on skates. To find out about more about the Cycle in the City event, go to the website at cycleinkc.com uh, where you can find information about uh, this event and we will be, uh, this will become an annual event that we will take to different neighborhoods every year. I'm Channel 2's Chris Hernandez. The city and the county have worked together to create a new process for the way they handle arrestees and detainees from the police department and municipal court. It is more streamlined, it's safer, and it saves taxpayers a lot of money. Uh, but we're doing more than just saving money, we're improving enforcement as well. Uh, with consolidation of the facilities and expanded video capabilities to all courtrooms, police officers can spend less time moving prisoners around and more time being on the street doing their jobs. Instead of taking everyone who was arrested all the way downtown, three division stations now have new detention facilities like this one. Officers will get back to the streets faster because transportation times are now shorter. And it helps the community because families will be able to get to the division station easier to post bond for the arrestee. And, and that shows the community once again, our, our elected officials and other people coming together and, and, and making a better product and treating our people like citizens and like we care about them. So when they come to jail now for whatever reason and people have mistakes, make mistakes, but we're showing them now we care about you. We have to do what we have to do, but we're going to put you in a facility where, where you're going to be taken care of and not just fed. You'll get some other resources. So that's important for our community, and that'll help us go through some of the things that we go through. The deal with Jackson County saves the city money by adding capacity at the county facility, reducing the per day inmate cost, and eliminating the need for a $5 million renovation at police headquarters to make the old detention center ADA compliant. So you think about this, you think about regional corrections and what this means for the residents of Jackson County and the residents of Kansas City. And what we really have here is a better product for corrections at a better price. Anyone who looks at Kansas City and um, believes it's business as usual is just not looking. You're not paying attention. This whole process implements many efficiencies, including something as simple as inputting a detainee's information. Now you do it once instead of three times. For Channel 2, I'm Chris Hernandez. We're talking about the importance of fathers reading to kids and Joy here, the owner of this establishment, knows exactly what that's about because he spent uh, all of his time and money last year. He came up with 500 book bags filled with books for kids in this community. But what we're talking about today is to make sure that people know the importance of fathers reading with their kids because most of the pictures you see are mothers reading with their kids. And even when we do see fathers, we don't see many African-American fathers or Latino fathers. We want to emphasize that because our black fathers and Latino fathers care just as much about their kids' education as anybody, and they read to their kids as well. So we have Dads Turn the Page, and Dads Turn the Page is simply a program to get fathers working with their children, reading with their children, and what we want them to do is take a picture of it, send it in to us, because at the end of the month, we're going to have a drawing, some sort of a contest, and people who have sent in uh, indications, photographs, stories about how they've read with their children are going to be eligible to win two baseball tickets for the Royals game. Good seats, too. 
So we want to make sure that people know how important it is for fathers to read with their children, and we want to make sure that every father has an opportunity to do that. So we're promoting that, and Joey has been kind enough to help us promote it, which is what he does all the time anyhow. Uh, not only do I think reading a book will make an impact, I also think that just the images will make an impact. People being able to see, uh, you know, being able to see some positive images, uh, fathers taking time for their kids. Uh, I would love for that type of action to be contagious, you know what I mean? So to be a part of that is something that I'm happy to do. Much has been said about the reduction in violent crimes in Kansas City, Missouri, especially as it relates to homicide. Property crimes don't get as much attention, but it affects many, many more people. Thanks to the hard work of KCPD, property crimes are down as well. For this report, we're going to focus on the Central Patrol Division, who in one month put a stop to five major burglary rings. We have a thing here where we keep track of our, our uh, career criminals when they get released or um, you know who might be in jail, who might not be in jail, or who might be their associates and things like that. And we, we sit down and we'll have discussions on when a pattern develops who we believe might be involved in it. And we'll narrow it down to three to five people and then we try to target them. And if, I, if we think we got a good target, I'll send it out to the officers in the field and say, listen, we don't have a lot of evidence on this, but hey, this guy is known to do this. And he is out of custody, and this is the area he likes to hit. Sergeant Mike Foster and his team noticed several different patterns, and they went after these cases with a gusto, including a group of known gang members responsible for burglaries all over the metropolitan area. One career criminal, in particular, presented a challenge to law enforcement, otherwise known as Spider-Man. He liked to climb up apartment complexes from the balconies, and he would go three stories up. And he could literally just pull himself up from one ba balcony to the next. And it was, and the squad had, had uh, arrested him five years earlier and he had gotten sent to prison and was in jail that whole time. Well, he was out and he was one that we weren't tracking and that we didn't know he was out of custody. There were several others committing property crimes around the Central Division, causing a spike in businesses and residential burglaries last year. That number has come down significantly. The challenge lies in keeping track of repeat offenders and keeping them behind bars. It's kind of a revolving door. It doesn't seem like a lot of them are going to get the help they need because it's given to them when they go to, through the process of getting arrested, getting found guilty, and then they're given all the help that they need. They just don't, they don't do it. I mean, I've had criminals that got out of jail and walked out of police headquarters and stole a car. Police can only do so much. We all must do our part to practice preventative measures to keep our homes, businesses, and automobiles safe from theft. Lighting around houses is always good. Making sure your door frames are solid, the door locks are a good lock, locking system. Be friends with your neighbors. Know your neighbors because your neighbors are your best witnesses. Um, there's how many times you go down a neighborhood and nobody even knows the person's name. So, I mean, just having relationships with the people in your neighborhood, whether you like them or not, it's good to know that when you leave town or you go to work, there's somebody on the block that you know that's still there. There are five other property crime squads on the department who are working just as hard. The drop in violent crime has gotten most of the publicity but Police Chief Daryl Forte reported 11,000 more victims of property crime than violent crime in Kansas City. It affects many, many more people, and that's why KCPD continues to devote resources to combating it so that fewer people become victims of property crime. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. 
Please join us for an opening night reception for the Art of Data at Arts KC 106 Southwest Boulevard. It's Friday, June 5th from 6 to 8 in the evening. The exhibit runs through June 26th at the Arts KC Gallery space. My name is Don Wilkerson. I'm an artist. I work under the pseudonym MOI, which stands for the Minister of Information. So the, they sent out this list of, of different kinds of charts that, that they wanted people to respond to. And there were several of them that spoke to me. Like, what would the... What would the person in the audience, when they're given this presentation about you know how the city's doing, what would what would the average person, how would they really like to see this chart? This exhibit is the first community project of the newly formed Office of Culture and Creative Services, and it will showcase ten local artists and creative teams. It also celebrates the five-year anniversary of the Office of Performance Management, which produces, analyzes, and reports out all that data that city leaders use to drive the decision-making about how to spend your tax dollars. In observance of Memorial Day, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Monday, May 25th. Also, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day throughout that week. For example, if your regular trash day is Monday, your trash and recycling will be picked up Tuesday. And if your regular trash day is Friday, your items will be collected on Saturday. To view this program again or for other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMOCCO. That's it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.